What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we are with the truck to talk about some of the biggest stigmas of owning a sport track. Now, this video may be triggering to some people, so I want you guys to take take yourself for, take a minute right now and just clear your clear your mind a little bit. You know, take get rid of all the negative negative thoughts you're probably gonna have about some of the stuff I'm gonna talk about in this video. And this is probably gonna be stuff that a lot of you guys have heard if you own these trucks, as much as myself. Um, I heard it quite a lot <laughs> since I've gotten mine, but we're gonna talk about some of the bigger, more um, common stigmas that come with owning a sport track. So this is behind me if you're new to my channel. Hello. Um, this is my 2003 XLS. Um, this is primarily going to be marketed, this video is primarily going to be towards the Gen 1 guys, but for the Gen 2 guys as well, this video will probably apply to you in some way, shape, or form. So uh, yeah, we're going to start off with one of the biggest ones, and that is the, it's not a real truck. So let's get to the back of the truck and I'll demonstrate exactly what I mean by the it's not a real truck stigma that lots of sport track owners including myself have gotten in the past so now we are at the back of my truck so this is again my 2003 and uh, as you guys can see the bed of the sport track is not big in the slightest and that is where the biggest it's not a truck a real truck stigma comes from is the fact that the bed is a four and a half foot long bed which is a lot smaller than any 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 truck bigger any a real truck um, like a Silverado or F-150 the bed is considerably smaller now this is like the, the reason this is contents like heavily contended a lot with these SUT trucks this isn't just a sport track thing I mean the Ridgeline have the same issue like a lot of people complain about the Ridgeline's bed being too small the Avalanche even which to me really to be honest sorry to all my Avalanche owners watching this video the Avalanche is like the most pointless because it is literally on the same chassis as a Tahoe which is on the same chassis as a Silverado so why the Avalanche exists, we'll never know, but um, it existed. The Escalade EXT, on the other hand, I kind of wish I could have gotten one of these at some point because I really like those trucks. But anyway, the Sport Track bed is incredibly small, which is why it is commonly said that it is not a real truck. And of course, a lot of people will say, well, um, the Ranger does this, this, and this better. It is, if you're looking for hauling, the Ranger is the better of the of the two Ford midsizes from this era. But if you want something that is going to haul all of your friends and family with you at the same time, that's going to carry some light stuff, nothing too crazy. You know, I don't expect you to be like, hey, let's carry a whole freaking engine in the back of this thing. I mean, you could. It's got space for it. But, you know, if you want to, if you work in construction, you ain't going to be hauling much stuff in the back of this thing without it sticking halfway out the bed. So that's kind of that. If you work in a more construction oriented site, my recommendation to get a Ranger or an F-150. If you're getting one of these, you're more than likely not hauling a lot of big stuff anyway. So, that is our first stigma. Let's get into the next one. The next stigma we're going to talk about, of course, the early 2000s Ford stigma. They found on road dead. Now, this is, of course, uh, a reference to Ford's reliability in the late 90s and early 2000s, as well as a lot of people who are Chevy fanboys and Dodge fanboys will say this even now today. Even though Ford has gotten their act together, they're not perfect, as I've said multiple times with the current generation Mustang, but they've gotten their act together. And this truck is, of course, part of that era of Ford's reliability woes, which were the late 90s and early 2000s. Some people have been very lucky and gotten tons of miles out of theirs. This one, in particular, is 244,000 miles and nearing 245. But that's not to say they're all perfect. I've seen some people with these trucks have them completely die at 85,000 miles, which is just completely insane to me because this one's got you know, multiple times that. Um, but it is a, it is something to worry about. Is uh, Ford reliability in the early 2000s just wasn't very good. I mean, if you know how to take care of a car, like this one has for the most part. I mean, I've done the best I can to take care of it. But you know, when it comes down to cars, in general, most brands, if you take really good care of them, you won't have any issues. But um, early 2000s Fords are just notoriously unreliable and very inefficient. This truck, in particular, um, actually is one of the least fuel efficient V6s I've ever seen, and I'll get into that in a minute. Um, um, like that stigma but one thing that's always been like something that sticks out with a lot of people who own these trucks is that their friends who may not like ford very much will be like oh fell on the road dead because you got a ford and that was something i dealt with a lot when i was in high school a lot of the friends i, I had i had the friends i had in high school were chevy people and so uh, when they found out i was buying a ford it was very hectic but now we're going to move into another one that is more of a mechanical thing much like i guess you could say the bed's not really mechanical but it's just there but we're going to talk about one of the mechanical stigmas behind these trucks so let's get into that all right, so next up on our list of stigmas is the engine. So the engine itself is just a stigma because it's it's not the greatest. <laughs> the 4.0, for those who don't know, which is what powers the Sport Track and is the only engine to power the Sport Track. It also powered the regular Explorer SUV, the Mustang for a little while, as well as the Ranger, which is this truck's chassis mate. 
um, as we did me and my friend Hayden the video comparing the Ranger to the sport track uh, about a year ago and uh, the 40 is notoriously how should I say this finicky um, well not as bad as like a Subaru EJ25 or something of that nature that is incredibly finicky this is one of the finicky engines I one of the probably one of the most finicky engines I've ever seen and that is due to its design the 40 is pretty infamous for its design as well as its reliability problems uh, mostly due to the timing chains timing chain failure on these is very common remember earlier when I referenced the found on road dead thing and I said that these trucks have a, have failed at 85,000 miles in the past timing chains nine times out of ten and one if one of these ends up at a scrapyard it is not an accident it's a timing chain failure and these engines are not only very expensive to replace, as most shops, as I've seen, will charge you about five grand to replace an engine, um, unless you know how to do it yourself. If you know how to do it yourself, save yourself some money. The engines themselves are not very inexpensive because there were so many of them made, so many cars made with this engine in it, not just the sport track. You can pretty much pull a 4.0 out of anything as long as you put the right intake manifold on it and the right, you know, throttle body and stuff like that because that's really the only two major things that are different between the two 4.0s as well as making sure you don't buy the wrong version of it because there is actually two versions of the 4.0. Um, there's a job one and job two, um, which depending on your model years, which one you'll have. And, um, you know, obviously a flex fuel and non-flex fuel version. Some, as actually is some models of the sport track that can run E85, which is kind of cool. But the 4.0 is finicky, and it's very poorly designed. The block is supposedly from a pushrod setup, the original 4.0 pushrod motor that powered the older Explorers from the, the late from the mid 90s. And that the reason for that is quite simple because it saves them money, it saves them time. They just retool the block, block a little bit, set it up for an overhead cam setup, and that's game. That's exactly what they did. But what they did to help orient everything was horrible. So what they did is they chose to take the standard 4.0s, uh, the standard pushrod engine's camshaft area and turn it into a jack shaft. Now, what does the jack shaft do? It drives the single most biggest problem with the 4.0 and that is the passenger side rear mounted timing chain. That's right, there's a single red cam V6 and one of the timing chains is on the back of the engine. It is my second least favorite timing system design. The title for that belongs to the Audi 4.2 which has all of its timing chains in the back. But Ford really goofed up on this engine, and uh, people are going to complain about it being built in Germany because that is true. It was designed by the Germans in Cologne, Germany. It's where the name, it's where the engine gets its name from. But it is the biggest stigma of the sport track is they all rattle on startup, mine included, and uh, it's a big problem with sport tracks. Sometimes you get really lucky with it. Mine has been doing the, the startup rattle for about three years now, and I've had no issues outside of the startup rattle. It is still concerning for sure. I definitely want to get it fixed. But I really have to decide whether I'm going to be keeping this that long. As I've, rumored, as I've alluded to in several videos, I have been debating on getting a new car next year, um, possibly later this year if I can get a job and make enough money fast enough. I really haven't decided yet. Um, or I might just get a project car and take the time when I have that car running to have this one fixed. Um, I'm really unsure on that one, but that's for another video. But that is the one of the next stigmas of the sport track is they all rattle on startup because of a poorly designed engine. All right, for our last stigma I'm gonna cover in today's video, we're gonna talk about how it's just a bigger Ranger. And that's kind of true. I mean, if, for those who don't know, this generation of the Explorer, um, the Sport Track in particular runs in the same chassis as the 95 to 01 Explorer, which is why it's very popular now with these trucks when they have timing chain failures, as I stated a minute ago, um, to actually put the 50 Windsor from the old Explorers in here. They'll simply just buy a 95 to 01 Explorer with the V8, say, and then bam, you got a V8 swap Sport Track because they didn't offer these with a V8 while Ford and che or Chevy did offer a V8 in their trucks. So what's up with that? Why would they do that? Um, Ford just didn't want to do it even though it was on the same chassis, but they were trying to make this more of a crew cab alternative to the Ranger. And it actually rides in the same chassis. That's why a lot of stuff that is in the sport track is literally the exact same as the Ranger and why a lot of parts are completely interchangeable. Um, some stuff like the door cards are different, but like the, like the dash is the exact same between the Sport Track and the Ranger. The gauge cluster is different, that's like the main thing. And the only real difference on like the front end of the truck in terms of the dash is the addition of a power window switch for the rear, because the Gen 1s all had power rear windows, which is really cool. I really love that feature. But yeah, pretty much the Sport Track, the Ranger, the 95 Del 1 Explorer, all riding the same chassis. Which is why you don't see stuff from the 2003 normal SUV Explorers going onto these, because they just aren't the same chassis. Um, it's also why the 4.6 doesn't fit in these. So yeah, that is the stigmas of owning a Sport Track. That's all the stuff you'll hear. Found on road dead, not a real truck because of the bed size. They all rattle on startup, and they're just a crew cab Ranger. So 
while I think these are awesome trucks, I love these things to death, I thought it would be kind of cool to highlight all of the stuff that you guys have probably heard and like why that's actually a thing, why people say that, because it's not unwarranted, because Ford does have a lot of history in this era of being unreliable, and the crappy design of the 4 does not help that case, and the bed's small, but I think it could be worse, you could have an avalanche. I'm just joking. All my avalanche viewers I like you guys. You guys are cool. I like I kind of still wish I could have gotten an avalanche. Ironically enough, an avalanche is what I was looking for before I got this. Um, they're just way too expensive. But anyway, guys, I think I'm gonna wrap things up here. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content coming soon with my truck, my 2003 full bolt-on truck. Um, as we're gonna be doing some like a little bit more mods to this thing, we're gonna get a retuned for the new AM intake here soon, and then that probably be it for the build. To be honest. The neighbor just started his 2018 Mustang GT with the active exhaust. It sounds pretty good. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day, everyone.